Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for December 2021 to order. The time is now 7.04 p.m. First item on the agenda is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board through public comment, please be sure to sign in on the sheet as well as come to the front of the room and speak towards the microphone, clearly stating your name and address. Uh, do we have any public comments at this time? Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, gentlemen who showed up this evening. Uh, my name is John Showers, as you remember from last one. What I'd like to start off the evening with is to clarify some things. Um, I was charging up the other cell phone. The most distressing thing that I got addressed is that whoever was here last month in the uh, bus attack or throwing me under the bus, that I came here representing citizens of the community that have apartment buildings. I didn't come here representing myself the last month's meeting. What I found was an attack on myself and what I'm trying to do with uh, my little workshop over here that I spend my evenings after working all day, you know, committing no crimes whatsoever. I was told that there was an incident with these police and firearms and everything. Well, what's distressing to note is that I received that evening a text message from the ex-wife of the gentleman that sat in the back and Kendra, Number one, has been educated twice for attempting suicide. And then I find out that she had a firearm on her in this meeting at last month's meeting. Now, as a police officer, I think you might agree. We're not supposed to be having any firearms at any public meetings like this. Okay, now, well, I try to charge up the cell phone so that I can show it to you, but it's, it's charging on, on the charger as we speak. If we need to go further with this, we can. What I'm gonna address and put to rest at this point is first of all, I want to show you some, uh, some proof of my residency, okay? This was a title issued on the Mustang that I won uh, in my, my class at Maple Grove with um, at the end of September. But I'd like you to read the issue date of this, please, so that everybody here can, and also the address on there. Date of issue is September 8th, 21. Okay. And the address. Well, I'd also like to uh, have you read. Hold on, hold on. When, what's hold the address? On. Is uh, 539 Mulberry Street, Reading, PA. And what does my driver's license say, please? Now, Drive, I'm gonna put this- Driver's, to, driver's on, license? Can we just stop yes, for a yeah, question. What did, yeah, you tell, what did you tell the police? You told the police you were living in that building. No, I did not. I, well, I actually- because the police report says that's what you told yeah. them. There never was a police report. And that you, had, and you were in possession of a firearm and fired it that evening. So if you want to continue to lie to us, do so. There's There's no not with sit with your ass down sir. and stop it. Yeah. There's no lying being done here at all, sir. Yeah. So, John, okay, before fine. you... I'm legally... Yeah, the, to... the police lied to us. You're right. I'm sure... So, that... John... What is that report? I never received... Why don't report? you just sit down and let's just put this so, on the bed. Okay, so, Jim, let him... Please continue with your public Kraft, comments, sir. Craft um, Health Services did come by. You guys have seen that, you know, what I've been doing out front there is, you know, the last thing i got to do is get the workbench inside. You know, and then at that point, there was nothing left outside. <laughs> You know, on the front of the building. Um, the Nissan, I did get the cattle converters off, so I can continue getting this also on the seller. Same as with the Escape. That is my workshop. Now, what you might not be aware of, and I did get, put a little parody on my television show, I am, I am in a public eye, just the same way that you all are, okay? I didn't want everybody knowing I lived at 539 Mulberry Street in the city. You know why? Because it's the hood now, but it's where I grew up. But at the same time, I have a public television show. I just did episode number 19. Do I not have a right to some privacy as to where I live? Why is the focus as, as to what I do with my workshop have anything to do with where I live? Well, you're right. The, it the, the issue it has is nothing to do with the issue. Right. Well, do you're right. Sense. It doesn't. Sit down. I'm the, going to make sure that there's no mess outside of that building. If we put this to rest at this point, but understand this, gentlemen, like I said to you, I came to you representing other citizens that asked me to because they're scared of this. They feel this is a biased board. 
They felt that with my background, having been on the planning board in an elected position in a previous state, that I would be beneficial to this community. And all I'm trying to do is work with you guys. Now, I did look into the matter. City of Lancaster is moving forward with a master plan, not just a comprehensive plan, which the state requires. What I witnessed at last month's meeting was you're adopting fees for, from what I'm missing for culverts that are based on bird lands style homes and townhouse developments, and then you're using another one for apartments from Ramazonia. We need our own current master plan. And the state does say this required every 10 years. Why would you not want to work cooperatively to create something that Mary Township can stand forward and say, we created this with the citizens of this community? So first, and, all first and foremost, when we have the need to do that, we do. We use the references of other places as a starting point so that we're not going into it blind. You wanna have good empirical information and data so that you are setting your fees appropriately. The same thing with any of the things with zoning. But that's not the correct way to be doing it. The correct way to be doing it, and, and if you look at the city of Lancaster, which is currently doing that. Well, you know, when, you, when you become so, a resident, why don't you worry about so, that? So, Since John, you don't live well, here, so what the hell well, do you care? Yeah. Since you don't live here, what do you care? Sit down. I have an interest Sit down and shut up. I have an interest here, Ron. Is that, is that the way professional individuals? Yes, are? that is. Okay, That's so the way I handle it. So I'm a 70 year old impatient person who's not going to put up with your crap well, coming to these meetings. I'm a 60 year old man that's, that's faced with retirement and a professional funny card driver with, with a national TV show that's number one. On a show. national TV show. Sit down. What's your, so, TV, what's your TV show? Oh, Pennsylvania Pickers. I will get a copy. Go I'm going to get a copy of the state police report. I'll bring it to the next meeting and I'll read it instead of I you reading your, your, your license. Before. I've been contacted with the officer. So, there was never anything done illegally since I've been there. What's well, funny so, that you would admit to that to the policeman and it's in the report that we have seen. Gentlemen, so first and foremost. I told him that I go there to work in my workshop. John. To work on the things that relate to my business. And my well, family. either the police are lying or you're lying. So, Which one is it? Everything yeah, well, so why don't you sit down and we'll discuss this again at a future date. Let's let's put a pin in that for a second. So the, the issue is not with your business, just to set the record straight. If you're doing something out of that garage that is a business in nature, you're entitled. You have every right to do that. Well, I'm, Does I'm, not, I'm not doing a business. I mean, my business, my business is at Redditors at 2500 North Carolina. <laughs> business. It's a workshop. True, shop. true. I mean, if it's a workshop, that's that's it's one different. thing. Yeah. It's Bottom line is the, the issue. My cars, plus I have a professional car. The issue. As I explained to this gentleman last month, I'm under contract that by the end of March, I've got to be in Texas with that funny car to, to obligate a contract, you know, which we do on a professional note. Everything I do is on a professional note. And I'm glad you're saying you're a man, but what encouragement have I received to even want to live in this community? So what I've seen is everything. Funny. I hope none. I really I'm hope none. Neighbor. You know why? Because I help people. Oh yeah, people. yes you do. I'm but sure you do. You might also want to be aware. I have no but time. I have, I have no time for liars. All right, sir. I'm, I have no time for liars. Have you have to. Liar. You have proven yourself to be a liar. So why don't you just sit down and knock it off? So, John. That's how I talk. That's how. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? I'm up in six that. years. Run. Right. I don't like yours either. I don't like liars. Boy, I'm not trying to lie to you. I'm, right. I came to you Jim. and have proven myself, and you have not proven anything but deception. So, John. Stick. And then I find out that there was somebody with a gun in here last month's meeting who was advocated twice. It's not illegal to keep a pistol or, or a firearm as long as you have a permit. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, let's, John. Is it legal in this meeting to have a firearm? No. No, it so isn't. Then I proved that there was a firearm in this meeting last month's meeting. John. Where do we go with that? It's not illegal no, to have no. a firearm in this meeting as long as you have a carry permit. No, you just said there was. No, it is not. You can't prohibit firearms. See, you only hear what you hear, don't you? So, so why don't I bring a firearm? You only hear what you want to hear. Why don't you do that? Let's, okay, yeah. this, is escal idea. this is escalating quickly. And you know what? I'll bring mine too, just in case. Guys. Hey, guys. guys, that's right. That Let's do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks. I'm, I'm following it. Thank you for your comment. The issue is not with the, the fact that you're using the garage. The risk issue is occupancy. If you're not occupying, you have nothing to worry about. So, so for the record, I looked up the address. Do you do you own the address or do you rent? What, this over here? No, no, the five uh, 529 Mulberry 539. Street. 539, thank you. 
I lived there with my best friend since 12 years of age. Okay. He said, do you own it or rent it? I don't really, either one, we're partners. Yeah. Okay, because I looked up the address and it doesn't have your name on it. So no, why, it's why you have it, that does it, it does, it does have. And that's also my partner in life. Okay, well that's, and that's fine. But I'm just saying, when I talked to the police and I did talk to the state police, I followed up almost immediately. The officer did say that you admitted to living in, in, no, in the structure. I never said I lived there at all. And you admitted to discharging a firearm multiple times. I admitted to discharging, I test fired a weapon that an individual brought by that she wanted to purchase. I did not, I did it safely. And by the way, I did it with blanks. That's, blanks are legal. You just told me you didn't have a firearm. I have plenty of firearms. So we're going to move on. Thank you for the comment. Right. Are there any other public comments? I have I have some at home, but I don't have a license. Uh -oh. Okay. Now I tell you, I'm a whole milk indicator. Mm -hmm. I wanted to prove that. Yeah. For, for the record, Nelson, that's never been in doubt. <laughs> no, okay. We know that. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I'm I'm not being ugly. Mm. I don't want to be ugly. So, okay. Nelson Trowman, lifelong dairy farmer in Marion Township, 97 milk, whole milk educator. Some things I observed at and since the last meeting. The very next trash pickup, I came to the end of our lane, 9.30 in the morning, that would be a Tuesday morning, and my trash bin was in the middle of the road, just laying there, upside down. This time, trash pickup was bad with neighbors. They left bottles, cans, paper on the road, I also picked up my neighbor lady's trash bin several times this summer in 2021. And uh, we, in uh, that particular time, uh, there were guys on the, on the truck and it wasn't that arm that picked it up. You know, that when they use the arm, it's pretty good, mm. but they, they don't close, they don't close the, the lid or whatever you call it on the top. And like I was saying last time, the pla plastic bags fly out. And <clears throat> as a farmer, we deal with plastic bags, uh, plastic uh, water bottles and aluminum cans mm. because we have magnets on our uh, equipment when Martin chops, he has a magnet on a, his chopper to get all the metal when well, it doesn't get aluminum. And uh, then if a can goes through, uh, it, it's a jagged edge from the chopper and it cuts the cow. The cow will eat metal. They will eat metal. And uh, it uh, cuts her on the inside, then she bleeds and dies. And with the plastic bag, they flow, they float around and, and they go in the field and they can get into a trough, a, 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 a feed trough, and the cow will eat it. And then when it's in her stomach, uh, I'm talking a ruminant. Hmm. I'm not talking a dog or a chicken. I'm talking an animal with four stomachs. In the rumen, that plastic bag will unfold some when it gets warm. Feed will go inside there and it'll clog her system up. And eventually you either send her off or she dies. So it, it is a problem with our rural, rural uh, living uh, the, way, the way we do. So, um, so I, I, I written down once again, there may have been a trash problem somewhere in the township. And when this trash service came for rural, we actually didn't ask for this service. Uh, we were told, and, uh, you know, my, my saying is one size fits all rural and village, and it doesn't. 
It, it just does. So I wanted to tell you about the, the cans, the water bottles and the trash on the road. And uh, last time Irene said, what should we do? And I guess nobody really wants to stop the trash pickup. Some of these guys have, uh, have uh, uh, dumpsters, but that isn't going to help where I live because we have houses along there and hey they throw them in the truck and then the plastic bags it won't it'll help on my farm but it won't help out there so uh i guess they either got to be told that they have to close the lid so that would solve a lot of problems one of the things on the agenda number, number 13 specifically is Eagle Disposal, our contract, and one of the things has been, we've gotten complaints about very similar, not quite the same as what you brought up before yeah. on the cows and cattle, but very similar. And we're <clears throat> pursuing a couple of different things. The first one is if there are remedies under the contract in terms of non-performance for us not getting the service that we're paying for, ways that we can have them remediate that so that we stop having the problems because you're you're not alone there are people i think probably at least four people in the audience who have had similar complaints where they take the trash out and there's stuff scattered yeah. i know i've had to pick yeah. stuff up personally at my house a couple of times the last thing is we're looking to do a, a request for bid <clears throat> on the trash service to see if we could go to a different service generally speaking no matter where you go there's a problem with garbage it's there's everybody has problems with the garbage it's just a there, fact of this life. is the first company that had an arm yeah uh, that's and that was better that's yeah and that's more it, common more it, most places do that now it, well all right if if they close their truck yeah you know. and that that may be something as simple as us making the pointed ask of you must close the truck but knowing really truly is half the battle yeah. so once we're in the, the the kind of conversations that we're continuing to have around that we can certainly make that ask. One of the, going back a number of years when we first started getting uh, trash collection from Eagle uh, was to have them not start collecting before a certain time because it was disturbing certain residents. They accommodated that request. So it should be simple enough to have them close so we don't have them littering, essentially, we're, when they're driving We're along. used to that out in the rural. That's, well, it may, you know, that may not bother you, but I'm just saying, yeah. even if it's not necessarily well, within they the contract, they may accommodate. four o'clock there for a while. Yeah. Three, three four o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Eagle did, but the other company did. Yeah. So bottom line is, if we know, we can ask. If we don't know, we can't ask. Right, right. Okay, number two. I understand you bought a John Deere backhoe and loader tractor. Uh, my son Jeremy bought a John Deere backhoe and loader tractor, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, seven, several years ago from a township southeast of here through uh, Stevenson Equipment, SEI. Hmm. He had to rebuild the front end, four wheel drive, radiator, and other parts, which he knew when he bought it. The reason was they loaded salt on the trucks. The salt spilled back over the bucket and onto the tractor. Now they only used, they didn't use that backhoe for much else hmm. than a, my suggestion is to get a special bucket made so this does not happen to the township tractor. So we actually, we had a training seminar with the guy from John Deere, the road crew was there. And one of the things that, I don't know if it's this way on any of the other John Deere's, it's not my area of expertise, but that particular one, you can actually tilt the radiators out and you can wash it down when you're done and you can effectively take all the salt out. One of the other things you can do is you can re temporarily reverse the fans so that the air is blowing out of the engine rather than in it. But for what it's worth, I agree with you. If we have any other route that we can do to protect the equipment, whether it's a special bucket or otherwise, I'm, I'm very much interested in that. I want to make sure that we get the kind of longevity out of that, that, that we should. Well, salt is salt. Salt is salt, no matter how you slice it, yeah. And fertilizer is fertilizer. Well, years ago, we had drills that we put fertilizer in the boxes, and you can oil it, you can wash it, you can, but it's fertilizer, and mm -hmm. salt's the same way. Mm -hmm. Salt is salt. So, by the way, we don't know who the contractor was several years ago, 
But the culvert that was put in up here on School Road and Catterman Hill was done very correctly. And it's working very well. We'll have to look back and see who did that. That was that would have been designed by McCarthy, though, put in by somebody, but designed by McCarthy. Well, they did a tremendous job. That was several years ago. And that thing, you that doesn't bump, that doesn't, there's no dip, there's no bump, there's nothing. It's smooth. Okay. And that was several years ago. So number three, last meeting we talked about sewage pumping and inspection. I understand, and I understand this, that there is a state mandate to pump your septic system, but there is not a state mandate to say who must inspect the system. There is a state mandate to inspect it. Yes. It was the decision of this board and the board prior, for the record, the board prior, because we did not change the all-not management ordinance to put it in the hands of a, a unbiased, impartial third party, the same way that we do with building inspection. So you're saying the guy that's pumping my septic system, if he's certified to inspect it, he can inspect it. No, what we're saying is you have to have it inspected by the SEO. It's no different than if you had any other permitting that was required for your, your system, you wouldn't go through your pumper to get that permitting. You'd have to go through the SEO. The reason that it's going through the SEO is your pumper could come out and if, I don't know if they want to make sure they keep your business. If they had a problem, they could just say, oh, you know, it's not that big of a deal, Nelson. But they're all it. certified. Again, certification isn't the problem in hand here. We're looking for somebody who is an unbiased third party to actually make a fair assessment of your system, anybody's system, really. Well, I don't agree with that. Okay. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. Some places do it this way. Some places don't. There are not many that do this. Jackson Township don't do that. That's Bethel Township don't. That's Swatar Township don't. Because I, my cousin has a, a farm in one township and a and a house in the other. They don't do that. I, I, I hear you. It's a valid point. Like I said, some places do it this way. Some places don't. It was the decision of that board to go with this. And for what it's worth, I agree with it. I think it's better to have that in a unbiased fashion where you, you don't have that pre-existing relationship with, with somebody as a business. You're not uh, paying them to do something and they want your business to come back each time. They're, Shouldn't we have a choice in this? It's... There's you know, a, one size don't fit all. One, one size doesn't fit all. However, it is a requirement to do this. And if we're going to do things, we're going to do it universally but, and fairly. But, no, no, that's not the American way. I respectfully disagree with both of you on that, that point, but we can certainly have further discussion about that if you'd like. You are right. My grandmother always used to say, you treat people the same by treating them differently. It's true. I, I don't, I don't think that's right. I, I have a guy that, you know, that's certified and it's not like we're friends or anything. And, and I said to him, can you inspect the septic system? Yeah, he said, I'm certified. Well, why must I have two people there? No, it's, it's, it is in the ordinance, Andy. Yeah, I know it's in the ordinance. I, I didn't know if there was any sort of uh, exception that says if no. you've had it pumped out within a certain well no if, if you've had it if you if you've had it pumped out you can you can get a pass on the the first inspection but that's, going that's what I was going going, going forward every anywhere between four to seven years you would have to have it inspected right and i think and Nelson's, our group uh, pumps every three years there's mm -hmm. 10 or 12 in our area that do this every three years yeah yeah i get mine pumped every three years i'm yeah, not yeah. under a mandate i live in south Highbury township there is no ordinance in you know, there is no requirement, hmm. but in, in this case, but this township's under the microscope. Well, then you must be. Well, it's, it's if part it's of a the... state mandate, you must no, no, no. be under that. There, there's a consent order that was issued in this yeah. township that said you you guys got to pass an all not management. Yeah. It's ordinance. it's part of the Act 537. They just haven't enacted it yet. But the consent order. Yeah, the consent order you, really you kind of forces to, things. By a certain date, you yeah. have to 
put to put in yeah. place an ordinance that yeah. deals with all that his disposal system. His point was public. why we have to do it, but you don't. The point is at some point you probably will because Act 537 is yeah. is a thing that's applicable across that's the entire the state. state. Yeah. So Kumra Township has has this. Hmm. Spring Township has this. Those are the local towns the closest to here, I think, that have Yeah, but Spring Township isn't rural like we are. Sure it is. Not like not like this is, but they have no. plenty of rural area. They, they have plenty the of all-lot systems, too. Township. We have yeah. 53 preserved farms in Marion Township. Which is the most how, many, how many are in Spring Township? Uh, actually, One. Yeah, One. Right. Three. Yeah. Isn't there, I'd have to look in the ordinance, isn't there something if you have more than 10 acres? There's an exemption. I think there's an exemption if you have more than 10 acres. I don't have the ordinance with me, but... Yeah. Now, so I'll tell you what, let me let me double check the ordinance because it's it's not exactly light reading, but yeah. there might actually be something in there because to your point of one size fits all, you have to be uniform and you have to be fair. That's across the board. That's just kind of a legal requirement for everything you do. That way you're not showing favoritism to a person or a group of persons. Um, I think there is something in there and I can't remember if it's the, the, the hookup or if it's with the actual pump out. Um, but I remember there being something about uh, um, agricultural properties exceeding 10 acres, like farms, are held to a slightly different standard. Well, so let me, let me 10 double... acres to be in clean and green. Yeah, and I think that's probably why they chose that number. But let me let me look and see, because I'm as you're, as you're talking, I'm running through things in my head here, um, that there, there may be slightly different rules for farms, actual like genuine farms. Bottom line, though, is you do still need to get it inspected because of just Act 537 well, and the requirements there. A guy that pumps it is an inspector. Well, and, and again, this is it's depending on how the ordinance is worded. This is the same thing with the trash. You could theoretically go and get a different trash hauler, except that our ordinance says that if you're a residence in, in the township or a business in the township, you have to go through the township hauler. It's no different than I think Reading isn't that way anymore, but. Um, there are some places, other places, where trash is the same way. You have Fleetwood. the official hauler, and that's it. Uh, Fleetwood, you get your own trash. Everybody has their own hauler. Yeah. It's on you. It's yeah. a resident. Yeah. So it varies from place to place. but That's the way it is in Leesport, too. Yeah. It was. But that's all right in a, <clears throat> in a town that, you know, Fleetwood isn't huge, but neither is Leesport. But I don't I don't know if we need 10 trash trucks driving around the township. I, I agree with you. And that's personally speaking here. That's why I like having the consolidated trash. It gives us better leverage for bargaining. We can get better prices on things when we do it this way. And it keeps from having like 15 different trash companies running around the township one every day of the week. And right like we don't need two or three sewage inspection guys running around, well, especially when the guy driving the truck is an inspector. Yeah, it's again it don't make sense to me okay i asked that privately after the meeting last time why we can't use the i mean the only thing we would the, do uh, if the, we the pump up right as it's the inspector yeah i mean he has as much to was, lose as we do yeah i was told that the ordinance the ordinance is written that way it's written that way but <laughs> so for it doesn't mean that we can't change the ordinance right. if we can so, find out exactly we can find yeah. out that they are inspectors and can be trusted yeah so to that point, Jim, nothing is ever set in stone. All right. We can always change it. Yep. And this is why I said, like, I'm happy to have additional conversation about this in the future because we can always amend the ordinance. Yeah. I happen to like the concept of having a centralized, we only have one place where it's the resident authority for that. We have the billing coming from one place. We have the 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 tie between the on lot management and everything else that's happening with Act 537. Everything is is streamlined and unified. But if there's enough of an interest from residents, that's something we can certainly consider. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's say I'll, I'll make sure she gets it, or Sue will make sure Thank she gets you. it. And one of these for Absolutely. She might need that. Yeah. Thank you. Did you? Did I get you here? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll hold on to Irene's. All right. Yeah. Nelson, your your pamphlets, do you want to leave some? 
like in the on the board. Okay. So you're you're welcome too. There's no table up in the Let's, oh, I mean, we'll, I mean, I can, right we can make a little, little hanger or something if he leaves him here. But okay. do we have any other public comments? Dave. Nelson stole my thunder. I'm here to talk about. Excuse me, can you say your name Dave, and your address? Dave Randler, 4, 451 West Penn Avenue, Robizonia. Thank you. Um, I'm here to talk about the sewage pump out also. Uh, first, is, is your SEO here? No, he's not present. Okay. Um, Nelson, you uh, you talked about the, the sewage. Um, I'm, I had all my tanks pumped out in Heidelberg Township and I had the one pumped out down here at the Grange. And um, my guy said, you know, you have to have that inspected. I said, well, I got the, the notice from, from Marion. And um, he said, well, you, you don't have to get yours inspected, I guess, for what, we're not in a cycle, I guess, for two or three yeah. or four years. I don't know mm -hmm. what it is. And then um, he said, you know, he said, well, we can inspect it. He said, but you were not allowed. He said, oh. we're, we're certified. Yeah. He said, uh, but Marion and Kumru and Spring doesn't allow it. And then I, I reached out to Andy and he said, yeah, he said, it, it's $200. I said, $200. I said, I guess I didn't read the, the article correctly. He said, yeah, it's $50 a year, but it's not $50 a year. It's $200 for the inspection. I mean, you, you know that, right? Yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's once every four years. But, but it's $200 for the inspection. Correct. So this guy's going to come out to do an inspection one time mm -hmm. for $200, your SEO. Do you know what the inspection is? Do you know how they do the inspection? They do. How do they do it? They look in the tank and ensure that the baffles are working. And how do they do it? They peer in. I don't think how, how, how do they do it? Did you, did you see yeah, them do say, it? I, I've never seen them actually do it, but you, you look either through I, the viewport I, or through I the I did. This guy lid. inspected all my tanks when he came out and did it. Mm -hmm. They take a, a, a mirror and a flashlight, look in, say, yep, looks good, and you're done. That's right. Five minutes for $200. If, if so, that. So five <laughs> minutes for two, no, let me finish. Okay. Five minutes for $200. How many tanks do you have in the township? It's a fair number. How many? Offhand, I don't know the exact thousand? number. It's that's two hundred thousand dollars. This guy's going to make. I think it's a thousand. It's two. It's many. it's definitely not a thousand. So, so well, it goes by. As I say, its last it's census was sixteen hundred something. It's still but a lot of money. It's so, a lot. It's a lot of money. We, what I'm getting at, what Nelson's getting at, there is no reason these pump guys can't do this inspection. They do it throughout the state. They're state certified. Do you think these guys are going to lose their state certification? state their state license to haul this shit to the sewer plant do you think they want to lose their license but because I, i'm a buddy of nelson's and we're gonna we're gonna do that do you know how much it cost me to get my tanks pumped 165 dollars they're doing the whole job for 165 dollars. do you know how much the inspection cost me zero they charged me zero dollars to do that inspection now you talk about helping the residents. So it's zero dollars for the inspection, and they're state certified. It costs nothing. Get these people to pump the tank, get inspected, give you a piece of paper, pay with your SEO, and zero dollars. Do you know um, I'm not opposed to revisiting the the ordinance specifically, but. And I mean, you before, can get anybody to do it. Be before any of this happened, we did actually recently reappoint an SEO, and the cost of the inspection was about the same every place that we talked to in terms of having that done. Unless we're going to change it, which we certainly can, to allow a, an actual certified pumper to do the inspection as well. If it's zero dollars, as you said, that certainly makes a lot more sense. But if you're going to have somebody, as the ordinance is written, come out and inspect it, it's about $200. Is that the fee in Kumru also? That's, it, I think it's fee actually understand. more than that in Kumru. But the other thing, even if, even if an SEO is doing it, 
You mean to tell me they're going to come out and say they're going to do eight inspections in a day? Sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of money. It's that is a lot of money for one guy to do inspections, and I just feel and believe me, my wife doesn't want me here tonight on a Thursday night before New Year's Eve. But I heard this is what you're going to talk about. And I heard you was going to set rates to put it on the tax bill tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys need to rethink this. I mean, I got two properties in the township. So, I mean, I'm not a great loss in the township here, but I, I just think that's wrong. I just think that's terribly wrong for the taxpayers. Um, like I said, I, I, you guys just need to rethink that, especially if it's $0 for a certified pumper to do it. And I'm hesitant to believe that it's zero. I'm sure it's probably going to be less if they're out him? doing it. Should we call the guy right, right now? I mean, let's get him on the phone. If he answers, I don't know. But I mean, Septic Solutions, that's who I used out of Bethel. I mean, they're all over the place. They have the green trucks, Septic mm -hmm. Solutions. I used Bailey's when I lived in Leesport and he inspected yeah. it. And yeah. it was, I, mean, I don't even think it was 165. Well, they're higher. They're Bailey's yeah. is expensive. They, they were bought it. They, they're higher. They're expensive. Well, so this was solutions. that was five years ago, but yeah, but yeah he inspected it. And you're right, he takes the mirror and puts yeah. it down in there and says, Yep, five you're in minutes. good shape. And the thing is, if mine wasn't in good shape, I'd know it because the yard would be flooded. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean I tend that's, to agree. That's okay. So what, so based on that, Jim, like we've talked about this at length at a whole bunch of other meetings. Is this something where we should give pause to putting the work the thing on the tax bill, which would I think create other problems. It's gonna, it'll the, create other problems, but yeah. I really think that we need to do a little more investigating on this. And I tend to agree with okay. a couple of people that have spoke tonight. Okay. Andy, how hard would that be to change the resolution that we have for setting the rates? Pretty easy. Okay. So I mean, we'll, I don't have I won't have it tonight. Yeah. So we'll we'll take that to heart and we'll the, the immediate action that we can take is we'll not put it on the tax bills for this upcoming year. Barring anything else that we do, we'll take it to discussion and decide if we as a board want to allow the pumpers, if they're certified, to do the inspections or not. And then we'll go from there. Is that fair? That's fair. I mean, like I said, I have, I have two properties. I have nothing. To lose. I just think I, I just needed to come and, and tell you guys about this. And like I said, my guy brought it to my attention with, with doing this. And like I said, he's doing it for nothing. And like I said, I, I just yeah. think it's the right thing to do. Okay. Yeah, I'd say. I, I just think it is. So uh, of the board just, members that are sitting here, you've got at well, least one, well, well, at least well, one, and I'm well, I'm kind of 50 50 on it well, personally. Well, so like I said, I, and again, they even have, though I already sent it in the municipal tax sheet, I, I mean, know. it's already been sent. Yeah, worst well, case okay. scenario. Well, what was today? the date? I think we can, I think we can, we can probably modify. Yeah. 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 I don't see that. I can. I'm not here. No, Sue. So, so oh, you, you, we can we can modify it. No, okay. Jim said call him tomorrow. I no, can't. I, mean, oh, I mean I doubt they're going to be doing anything, but it's it's not it's I mean, not impossible. We can we either. can figure yeah. out the stuff on the back end. But yeah. all right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. Too. Tell your wife thanks for sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> so that would change number two. And number three, right on the agenda. No, because we still we, we have to buy number state. The... Was that number two? Yeah. Number two is good to go. Number two is good. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I thought you put number three on. Three was combined with two. Yeah. But they have to be uncombined. Okay. Okay. But it's you can make your motion accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. One person on the Zoom, by the way. That's uh, Kelly P. Okay, moving into the main items for discussion. No, 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 no. Oh. Is Kelly in the minutes? Oh, thank you. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, next is to approve the minutes of the November 18th, 2021 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. She's out there, sorry. Yep. <laughs> so I used to saying that, Jim. Hi. <laughs> Okay, next is to approve the minutes of the December 18th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll motion to second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, next is the treasurer's report. Irene typically gives us. So the, the only 
noteworthy item that we have is we are continuing to send out the letters around collecting some of those fees that have been uncollected in the past. Um, we've had fairly good results so far. There are still a couple of homeowners who are not uh, paying the outstanding fees. Um, we still have some items that are out the stone as well, but we'll continue to monitor that as the months go on. Uh, we are working with Kozlov Stout for recovery on any of the unpaid items. So we'll actually have some recourse there to, to make sure that people are paying the proper things. It's a fairly substantial amount of money too that is um, kind of in flux on that. So it'd be good to have that back in. If everybody pays for it, that's most of a culvert project that we'd get back for stuff that was previously uncollected. <clears throat> I understand that Stone Group's not being extremely cooperative, but no, that's unfortunately kind of par for the course. But next, approval the of the payment of bills for December twenty twenty one. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Now, items for discussion. Uh, next is to adopt the 2022 budget. This was accepted at the October 28th Board of Supervisor meeting and advertised on November 10th. It was available for in public inspection. No requests to inspect the budget were received. The operating uh, revenue for the general fund next year is anticipated to be $721,251.59. The street light fund is $4,159.63 and the state aid liquid fuels fund is $144,166.85. This is a total operating revenue budget of $869,578.07. I'll make a motion to adopt the 2022 budget. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to adopt the 2022 real estate and streetlight tax rates. Uh, we are keeping the millage rate for real estate at two mills and the street light front footage will be set at 65 cents. Uh, this is resolution 2021-7. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-7. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, for number three, per based on the discussion of public comments, we are going to skip the adoption of the 2022 Olds uh, fee levy rate of $50 per year uh, until we can discuss that further. If there are any changes that we have to do with the tax bill, we can certainly do that uh, at that time. Next is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. The project is in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County with a very small area in Marion. The traffic study has been completed. This was reviewed at a meeting at the Wilmersdorf Borough Hall on December 14th, in which Sue and Irene both attended. Uh, we're looking at uh, approximately 245 tractor trailer trucks projected to go through Wilmersdorf, around 490 round trips. Uh, traffic of approximately 200 to 400 employees additional each day as well, some of which may go through Marion. So other than that, I don't know that we have any or really any other updates. Um, we're waiting to see, but based on how things are starting to progress, we can certainly make objections to things, but I don't know, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Andy in case he knows more, um, how much we can s protest or um, uh, lodge any complaints against this project based on the fact that it's predominantly in Mill Creek rather than in Marion. Is, yeah, I mean, we can protest as much as we want. Yeah. Whether, whether it's heard or not, that's the, the main point, I guess, but... It was it was shocking uh, to hear. I was there too at that meeting. The amount of traffic, truck traffic that would come through the borough of Wilmersdorf. I yeah. mean, it is it is mind boggling how I, many trucks are going to come through there. I don't know how the roads are going to do it. No, <laughs> I, I don't know either. And they talked about eliminating parking, and uh, I mean parking's at a premium, as a lot of people know in in the borough. So. Eliminating one spot would be difficult, mm -hmm. let alone the 20 yep. or 30 spots that they're talking about mm -hmm. to have safe travel. So there's more to follow on this. They, they're supposed to have, I thought, summarized that meeting with minutes, but I haven't seen anything or heard anything yet as a result. So there's going to be more, more meetings. Mm -hmm. that, that meeting occurred because PennDOT made them. You know, PennDOT made them talk to Marion and Wilmersdorf. So, I'm glad they did. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the borough's not in favor of it either. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, and we'll work closely with Wolmelsdorf on that because, like I said, I think from a legal standpoint, there's not much we can do other than protest, but we certainly don't want to have that right in essentially uh, Stonecroft's backyard. And the likelihood of having traffic go down like Main Street is kind of slim for us, but you could have people cutting across, coming from other areas, maybe not so much the tractor trailers, but certainly the, the employee traffic. Sure. They did show pictures of what it what it would look like and uh, where it could be seen from and not be seen from. Mm -hmm. And I, that was surprising too, because at most spots that they, they had, I mean, they had a limited viewpoint. I think there were maybe five photographs that they took, but you couldn't see it from mm -hmm. a lot of those areas. <clears throat> or you could just see maybe the top of the roof. It's surprising. It kind of sits down a little bit. I mean, visibility, that's, that's good to know, but there's certainly going to be noise and light and all sorts of other factors that go along with having a, a structure of that size there. Yes. Not to mention, did they, did they say anything of whether it was like a, a 12 by 7 or a 24 by 7 operation? It's 24, 24 7. 7. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, yeah. They expect that we've seen some preliminary information. They're going to start construction April 2022. They expect to finish these two buildings by April of 2023. We've already seen a, a small road going into the property, a new road. Plus, we've seen a couple drillings that they've done up in the field as well. So, anyway. so the access road doesn't surprise me, and the drilling doesn't surprise me either but i'm surprised that they're being that aggressive with construction because i didn't think they even had permits they didn't submit yet. a plan yet yeah they haven't even submitted a finalized plan but mm -hmm. it might be might be cart before the horse but yeah. where i mean we've seen it, it's like that in fact i think some of the paperwork that yeah I sent to down to yeah I've, I've seen what, what very lengthy it's 369 pages yeah yeah. Our group at Stone Crop Village is staying on top of it. We suggest Bulb Store, Darien Township, flood Mill Creek's uh, township meetings with people just to, to voice their opinion. When is their meeting due now? I'd have to check that soon. I, I have not been able to get to one yet, but I know the group, the stone crop group, has been there twice. I think. Okay, if you let us know the dates, okay. we can, yeah, we can certainly go. As this comes closer to fruition, Andy, how long do, how long would it take us to put weight limits on our street through town? Oh, that would. That's that's easy. That's just an ordinance for signage. Is yeah, it? we'd have we might have to do a we'd traffic do study. A study. Um, we might be able to but reuse we, that. we might be able to reuse the one that they just did for the stop signs along Main Street. Okay. Yeah, you'd have to ask. Uh, We'd have to ask him on the timing of it, but yeah, because I was. We one definitely of, want to keep the truck traffic out of here. Yeah. I don't think we can do anything about cars, but we can stop the trucks from coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good thought. Yeah, that was okay. what we discussed last month. Was making it so like class right. two vehicles only. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll continue to monitor that closely. And if there's any anything that we can do, we will absolutely do it to try to, to make sure that this is um, not done in a way that's going to impact uh, any any of the residents, Stonecroft most acutely being the closest, but uh, any residents around this. Uh, next is the Spur Road and School Road intersection. The project is complete. Uh, we do have to enact an ordinance for the stop sign up. It was advertised on December 17th, and Andy has the ordinance for tonight. I have it. So, I will make a motion to approve the ordinance for the stop sign at Spur Road and School Road. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. We have a series of culverts on the agenda. We don't have any major updates on those. We are waiting GP7 permits on three out of the four of them. The, the first one, though, we are actually going to put it out to the dirt and gravel low volume road program to see if we can get grant money for that before we start going into construction on our own. But with any luck, we may get that through that program and actually have some kind of un unanticipated additional money that we can use towards other road work. 
Uh, I believe submission for that opens in the early part of January. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, we just go through McCarthy Engineering for that, which we'll continue to do. This particular one actually has previously had that grant submission prepared. Um, we just didn't get it based on uh, another project that they, they saw as a, a better fit for the money that year. So we'll reapply. If we get it, fantastic. If we don't, then we'll proceed with, uh, with doing that construction with Butch and the rest of the road crew in the early part of the spring. Um, next up, um, I haven't heard anything, uh, was the, the request that I had as a, as a resident to abandon a small section of Shady Cabin Circle on the end there, which is, is not paved. Um, I've not heard anything or seen anything. I don't know if there are any updates, in which case, uh, Andy, if you don't have any updates, we'll just skip past that one for now. What number? That's uh, okay. 10. Uh, 10. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's and believe she me. did talk to me about it. Yeah, there's there's no major rush on it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I'll have more next month. Okay. Yes. Don't forget to contact Senator Arnold, your engineer, mm -hmm. Christine. She'll push her to make you grant them. Yeah, we've actually just for the grant thing specifically with that we've had very good luck in the past with that because one we have some very good projects that we've put in and we had very low competition but over the past i want to say three or three to five years a lot of other places have started applying for that so it's been more competitive well, but she said if she don't know she can't push it yep i think what nelson's referring to is money for school road oh for school road okay mm -hmm. yeah well these grants come through um this Dirt, gravel, low volume yeah. roads through Berks County Conservation District. Yeah, that's that's different. It's BCD, than I BCCD rather than the state. Mm -hmm. But to your point, if if there are options for grants, we absolutely yeah. we want to take advantage of them. Okay. Next road project for 2022. Uh, I am putting together the list of the culverts and uh, any other roads that we are going to more immediately need to either resurface or do remedial work on uh, oil and chip cold patching, et cetera. Um, and that's going to help us uh, provide the, the next thing, which is the UGI ahead of paving program so that they know where we're doing work. Uh, but I'm going to be working on getting that packet together for 2022, just like I did for 2021. Uh, chances are it's going to be early part of January that I get that together. Um, related to that, I brought it up at the last meeting. I'd like to appoint Butch in 2022 as the roadmaster. I'll obviously continue to do any of the computer related things that he needs help with and help him put together packets and plans and grant items, but uh, like to get him kind of behind the wheel, so to speak on some of the day-to-day the -day operational stuff. He already does uh, a stellar job with most of it. I wanna see him get the title and a little more responsibility around that going into next year. I've already talked to Butch, so I'm not like, not saddling this uh, as a surprise with Butch, but uh, for, for us, for the reorg meeting, that's one of the things that I'm gonna bring up. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Eagle Disposal Contract. Uh, this is a three-year contract that we have that expires in March 20, uh, 21st of 2022. Uh, we do have an option to renew for one year and an option to renew for a second year totaling five years. Uh, for years one through three, we had a quarterly rate for trash and recycling totaling $67.20. Um, for year four, this was $70.20. And for year five, it would be $73.20. They have provided free trash and recycling totes, which everybody now has. Um, we have some documents that were drawn up for things going out to bid. Um, I think the last question that was outstanding for us to be able to do that was what recycling we wanted to have within the, the bid packet. And I know we were going to try to reach out to some of the neighboring uh, municipalities like Wolvesdorf. That's it's okay. We've been busy, but um, <laughs> to see what they bid out recently, because the, the climate for recycling changes pretty rapidly on to put it lightly, really what can be exported to China, um, what they're taking, what they're not taking. Um, well, we, we just talked about this in, in Heidelberg. So glass is, glass is now recyclable. There was a question about whether glass was or mm -hmm. was not recyclable in the past and it wasn't, and then now it, apparently it is. Hmm. So most things are yeah, recyclable. I, well, yeah, I know like, when you put it out to bid, you can you can put whatever you want in terms of requirements, and they'll they'll price accordingly. But I know there are some things that really 
really so heavily no. influence the price. Wilmot we'll store will not take last. Yeah. At all. No. Yeah. Yeah, the boroughs, the boroughs, uh, for whatever reason, their contract came in as no glass. Yeah. Right now, like Eagle will do glass, aluminum, mm -hmm. and I think everything up to five. Like they'll do one through five and no, but no styrofoam. Um, personally, I'd like to see us do something similar unless there is something that we reach out to like Wolmo Store or Shillington or whoever. And they say like, yeah, you got to stay away from whatever because it's astronomically expensive. How long does um, it take to Are you planning on bidding it at? Uh... I, I, I mean, we have, it's March. How long does it take to advertise? So we should get going on that It's now. 30 days. I mean, we want to get started on it sooner rather than later. Um, I kind of like, would like to, to stay with what we have recycling wise for what, what's accepted, but. Do we have glass now? We do. Yes. We do have glass now. We put glass in. Yeah, yeah I, I, put, I put, I put, just about everything that's recyclable out with the exception of like styrofoam because I know they don't take it. The, the, um, the difficult part is uh, the price is good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You, you know, the price is actually really good. Yeah. And um, the service is, is poor mm -hmm. apparently in a lot of places. Yeah. See, I, I, I mostly I want to put... The reason you want to bid it is because the service is bad. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to bid it to see that we have a competitive rate, which I'm uh, honestly speaking here, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're on the low end of the spectrum in terms of cost, which is going to be hard. It's going to be hard to beat that. Um, but the only way you know this is if you put it out to bid and everything comes back way high. Yeah. Um, in tandem, like what we were talking about with, with Nelson when he was doing the comment, is we do want to pursue under the contract um, certain remedies around uh, either poor performance or lack of performance on certain things, namely um, stuff falling off the truck or them dumping stuff and having it go everywhere. We don't want to have a situation where the, the trash collection company is inadvertently littering um, and then having homeowners have to pick it up or causing it. Yeah. And, and, well, I'm sure, I'm sure they know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've, yeah, but you we've, want to have stuff in the, in the, in the contract that says if, if you, if we have penalties, if yeah. you have monetary fines or whatever associated with it, and then a get out clause if they're, yeah. Horrible. You can get out. Yeah, we I don't know. Have, we have yeah, we have we have that. I don't know if we're we're going the full exit route, but Nelson, we have called in complaints numerous times. Poor Sue times. has called Eagle <laughs> four more times than she can count. Um, so they're they are aware of it, but in terms of like a specific suggestion of like, hey, do you guys know that you're not closing the lids on the truck and bags are coming out? That that might be very acutely helpful for them, but they're they're aware that there's a, a certain level of dissatisfaction yeah. so around. Yesterday, the the complainer called Eagle mm -hmm. was told by their like office manager, whatever she is, you call Marion and have Marion call in because Marion holds the contract. Maybe they'll listen to Marion. They don't listen to me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Our <laughs> office manager. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. After five phone calls, the guy was very angry. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's... One, one time, uh, one time, Styrofoam in my truck. Right, I tried to yeah. in, and uh, I just got over the garage near the truck, and uh, and uh, uh, piece, uh, piece of styrofoam fell out of the truck while the truck was setting still, and uh, the driver didn't even pick it up and throw it in. So. Yeah, and that's. I, I went out and picked it up. And it my bag. Yep, that that's been a, a pretty common complaint where something falls out and they don't get out and, and get it. So. Heidelberg, Heidelberg bid theirs out earlier this year, I think, and got a pretty good price, surprisingly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the concern is, I think everywhere has problems with trash. You got to, oh, it's yeah. one problem or another. There's always yeah. a problem. Oh, yeah. So the real question is, is it worthwhile from a cost standpoint to go get another service? The only way you find that out is you put it out to bid and see what comes back. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'd have to work on that pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say we, we definitely want to work on that pretty quickly just okay. for nothing else to see. Yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda, we have several terms expiring in January of 2022. All have agreed to serve another term and are uh, looking to be reappointed at the reorg meeting on January 3rd. Uh, we'd like to extend our thanks to everyone who is currently serving and has served. 
uh, Clara Zimmerman on the Planning Commission, Nelson Troutman on Zoning Hearing, Nancy Carrington on the Vacancy Board as the Chairperson, and John Seleski as the Emergency Management Coordinator. Uh, next item on the agenda with really no substantial updates is the Rental Inspection Ordinance. Uh, we are still looking at this, but uh, based on time as a factor for several other things, I've not gotten a chance to do a, a deep dive or a red line on the like four or five rental ordinances that we have for review. Um, Realistically, maybe January or February, we can have a, a good quality uh, review at one of the workshop meetings. Um, next, building maintenance. Uh, we have kind of put that on a, a hiatus for a couple of reasons. Uh, namely, we're assessing whether or not it's going to be cost effective to do substantial renovations to this building or if it would be better to break ground on a, a new township building. Um, that coupled with the fact that contractors aren't returning calls for estimates on things has made it difficult. So we're, we're kind of putting that at, at a standstill to res be resumed in early spring. The American Rescue Plan Act, uh, we are still awaiting U.S. Treasury approval or uh, approval of final rules, I should say, um, in terms of what we can and cannot use the money for. Uh, right now, it looks like we would be able to use it for a pretty fair number of things, one of which would be culvert work. Road work is prohibited, but culvert work is not. So if all else fails, we can use it for certain road projects. Otherwise, we could certainly use it for um, specific types of building renovation and improvement around um, reaction or response to a, a pandemic. Um, I think it was, a, was it what, about 109,000 for that? 100, let me put it on this time. Yeah. It's 100. Thousand it was over a hundred thousand that we got last year and we'll be getting another hundred thousand. So we'll have in excess of about $200,000 of uh, additional funding to be able to do certain things with next year. There was some discussion too uh, about being able to use this for the liquid fuels replacement money that we lost. For so, certain, for certain things. Yeah. 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 We can so, use it for revenue loss. Yeah. yeah for the revenue. Yes. Yeah. So that's a plus too. And I think that's, across the board. It doesn't even have to be liquid fuels. You can use it to offset revenue loss if we had loss in the general fund Good. as well. Uh, next, the credit cards policy. Uh, Irene is working on this and supply to drafts. Um, I've actually been working on a uh, overall like employee handbook in which I'll be incorporating Irene's credit card policy stuff into. Um, about 80% of the way done with that. So maybe for the January meeting, I'll have a, a copy that you guys can see, but it covers the, the standards of, um, like in the case of Sue, requesting time off, holidays, uh, the fact that she does have contributions from us for the pension fund, uh, use of computers, radios, phones, um, the credit card, um, safety equipment, that sort of thing, uh, not using township equipment like the back backhoe loader, et cetera, for personal use. Um, trying to be as comprehensive as possible and uh, have taken uh, key things from some other some other townships that have actually produced employee handbooks in the past. So we'll hopefully have that soon. Uh, next up is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. A hearing was held on November 30th at the Robazonia Borough Hall to adopt the Heidelberg, North Heidelberg, Robazonia Amendments. The Robazonia Amendment did not pass because of North Heidelberg Township's tie vote. Uh, Dave, do you, do you know, did they, did they re-vote? They did. Did, did it pass? Yes. Okay. Two well, to good. One. good. So that, that passed. Um, does that have to be voted on again at another? Okay. I didn't think it did, but I just wanted to be sure. Um, okay. This was uh, considered in their December 22nd, 2021 meeting. And as we know now, it, it passed. Uh, this is to designate the convenience store with fuel pumps as a separate district uh, use in the town center, highway commercial and general industrial and light industrial zoning districts. This will also provide use specific regulations around parking, vehicular circulation around the pumps, placement of ventilation equipment, setbacks for fuel pumps, maximum number of pumps, et cetera. Um, North Heidelberg would like to amend the ordinance also. This was one of the discussion points for the last meeting around solar farms and solar installations. Uh, this will need to go before Marion's Planning Commission before we, we move forward on it. Uh, I've read through the proposal. It's, it's very good. It's very comprehensive. Uh, the next Planning Commission meeting is on January the 18th, and then we'll review it at that time. Okay. Next is the payment of engineer attorney fees. Um, we're reviewing the stormwater plan costs. Um, Currently, we're sending a letter and invoice. A second invoice includes a 6% increase. Third letter would include a 6% increase on top of that and be sent certified. 
Uh, Alicia at Kozlov Stout is helping us beef up the letters that we send to make sure that they're as legally binding as possible and to help with collections. Uh, we can send bills for work performed within the past three years and can withhold a permit if bills are not paid. Um, as mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, we've sent out a, a a salvo of letters and we've actually had a pretty good response overall. There are a couple of homeowners that are more or less ignoring it, but the response has been favorable overall other than like Stone Group. So we'll continue to do that, but this is an, an area where the township has essentially been taking it out of pocket for, for people's purple personal expenses uh, for projects for a number of years and it just kind of slipped under the radar. So now that we've caught it, we're remediating it and we're making sure that we collect those funds. Thank you, Irene, for catching it. Yeah, that was a good good spot on Irene's part when she was going through the books. Next is to update the saldo uh, and stormwater management ordinance and the fees associated. The subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991 and the fees are from 2005. The stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. Uh, we are still going through the process of reviewing these to bring them to current and we will need to very definitively go through the saldo and make sure that that's up to date. And I'd actually like to get planning commission review on that after we take a, a crack at it to make sure that it's, it passes their scrutiny as well. Um, realistically, probably going to be a January or February workshop meeting thing. Cause that's, that's going to be a time intensive thing to go through that. Um, the fee schedule alone for those two things was a, a quite a lengthy uh, spreadsheet. <laughs> Um, where not everything matches up with ours. Uh, we have some things that we, we don't collect for, but we probably should. And we have some things that I, I don't even know if they're on the sheet. So we're going to have to look at that and, and set rates accordingly so that we're not essentially paying for people's projects out of the, the taxpayer funds. Next, the Main Street traffic study. Uh, we had that study done. We are waiting for the report me, from traffic planning and design. This is for potentially putting in a stop sign at either Church and Main, Water and Main, or Sharp and Main, and uh, may also be useful for placing signage around the uh, Class Two vehicle only on Main Street, which would help cut down truck traffic down through the residential area. Next is the 2022 fee schedules for professional services. Uh, we received a schedule from Burks and Virotech, McCarthy Engineering, Kozlov Stout, Craft Code Services, and Attorney Keith Mooney. Um, we would be setting them at the reorganizational meeting, if I'm not mistaken. And they're actually adopted at the January meeting. The ja January meeting, After thank you. you. you you point at reorg and then you adopt the fees at the next meeting. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we received several donation requests. Uh, one was from Helping Harvest and Crime Works in Berks County and the Walmart Store Community Library. Uh, we did discuss at the last meeting the donations for 2022. What we had decided upon was the Berks County Conservation District of seven hundred dollars. Oh, no, I didn't change. Oh, you didn't change that. it. Okay, so that's six hundred six fifty. I apologize. I thought. Yeah, I didn't. I thought you updated it. that. Do you have the current ones? I do. Okay, Berks you... County Conservation District six fifty six hundred fifty dollars. Berks County Library fifty dollars. Berks Nature two hundred dollars. Center for Excellence in Local Government fifty dollars. Prime Alert, Berks County, $100. Wilmot Surf Community Library, $200. Helping Harvest Food Bank, $150. And Wilmot, uh, Irene wanted to donate to Wilmot Surf Fire Company, $100. Well, we also pay for Marion's Workman's Comp and Insurance, too. Yeah. So it's, believe me, it's, it's, it was a consideration, but the, those two things are fairly costly every year. And we also pass through the, uh, the foreign fire, which is about 13 or $14,000 mm -hmm. every year. And she said there was a request from almost our fire company for us to make a donation because of the flooding. Mm -hmm. We almost our They responded, we, we responded pretty heavily. And used their pumps. Yeah. Um, so there was a request. So it's, it's not an out of sight, out of mind thing. It's just, it's, it's uh, an area where we get help from that we haven't been doing any sort of donation to, but. We do help them too. Uh, uh, understood, understood. It's so. them for a donation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I personally, I, I like the situation that we're at. So I'll, I'll motion to approve the donations for 2022. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 
Jim. Aye. Okay. And I agree, we should look at making a donation to Mary. Yeah. I know as a, as a resident, I donate because I, I, I very much value the service that you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next is the professional services solicitation letters. Uh, this was received from MGS Insurance for Workman's Comp Insurance for the Township and Marion Volunteer Fire Company. Uh, we received a letter from Excella Architects and Engineering for the position of engineers. Uh, really no action needed on this one, just general advisement. Um, next, building security. Tri-County Security was out to evaluate a buzz-in system where the door could be locked and unlocked remotely by the secretary, allowing her to buzz people into the building. Uh, he suggested we also put up a camera outside. We are still waiting for a quote on both aspects of that. Um, we could also uh, call an electrician to replace the can light fixture on the porch as it's, it's pretty dim mm -hmm. uh, and to replace the fixture inside the door. Um, I don't have a problem with calling an electrician. Um, if we want, like I said, if you, like, if you look at Lowe's sometime, like if you, if you find a, a fixture that you, you think would be good for the inside, let me know. I can, I, I know I'm busy and everything like that, but I can, I can come out and I can change a fixture. That's, that's. Not that well, I mean, bad. You I talked do about that. putting. I would either like the outside light on a timer yeah. or just to dawn on you know yeah. on and off thing. I actually um, I, just because I, I come in for nighttime meetings in the wintertime, it's dark. Yeah, I, um, I bought a timer. I was just going to give it to you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. 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 No, I, I got you a timer. I have one of my, my garage lights that you, you program a day of the week and it can go on and off at certain times. So is that on the switch? It's, it's a switch. You can turn it on and off too, but it's got a little little digital okay. timer thing. So okay. Um, okay. I just, I picked that up. I'm just going to- You may want to have him at a camera pointing out in the- Yes. Uh, honestly, if we're, if we're doing anything with cameras, it doesn't make sense to do just one. Yeah. Like DVR systems aren't that expensive. Yeah. I mean, They're was, a couple hundred bucks. He was going to get me a quote. He just didn't get it to yeah. it. But it would be good to have one on the door, one on the parking lot. There, there's a couple of strategic spots, but I, I want to see what they come back with as a quote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is the PSATS membership dues. Uh, we reviewed at the workshop meeting and made a motion to pay the dues of $1,120 for our PSATS membership. Next, the PSATS 2021 salary survey is available. Uh, gentlemen, if, if you want to have a conversation, please. Um, otherwise, wait until the end. Thank you. Um, the salary survey is available for anybody that wants to participate in that. Uh, next is the PSATS 2022 Educational Conference and Exhibit Show. Uh, this will be held on April 24th through the 27th at the Hershey Lodge. Registration opens January 11th, 2021 and can be done online. This is $175 per person. Cost and mileage will be paid by the township. A motion would be needed to authorize whoever would want to attend. Um, I think in the past, we, I mean, you can. There are workshops for supervisors, council members, secretaries, managers, treasurers, administrators, tax collectors, police, fire, EMS personnel, parks and recreation, public works and road crew member, road crew employees, and zoning and building code officers. Those are workshops. Okay. Thank you, Sue. I think in the past, we've made kind of a, a blanket authorization for if we want to allow the supervisors, the secretary, the road crew to treasurer. attend, treasurer. Thank you. Um, Do you have any seminars for anger management? No, <laughs> not <a> few sets. <laughs> I can uh, inquire though. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there might be a seminar about like dealing with conflict or something. Yeah, I'm sure there is. There um, are those. <laughs> So I'll make a motion to authorize the any interested supervisor, secretary, treasurer, or road crew to attend the PSATS 2022 Educational Conference and Exhibit Show. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Just let me know if you want to go so I can register. Okay, thank you. Next is the Riverbend Estates request for letter of credit bond release. Uh, according to McCarthy Engineering, the amount of the letter of credit is $38,634.62, which was the amount retained for the 18-month 18 18 maintenance bond based on on-site inspection on 12-15-21. They recommended a full release of the financial surety in an amount of $38,634.62. Uh, and any additional auto increases that may have occurred from the original agreement. This release is contingent upon payment of all township fees and invoices. 
McCarthy's final invoice will be forthcoming. So if we're going to do anything with that, we want a motion to release under the contingent that they pay all township fees and any outstanding McCarthy engineering invoices. So um, I'll make a motion Please. to, yes. Before you make that motion. Yep. Uh, what they remitted payment or what they owe. Well, this is Riverbend, this not Stone Crop. This is Riverbend. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the motion is going to be contingent on them paying all outstanding fees and invoices. Okay. Yeah. And that's, we're doing that very specifically wording wise to make sure that they do satisfy that. Cause we don't want to give somebody a, a kind of a get out of jail free card. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if they've satisfied it though. I, I don't think we, no, we, we, we any, legally can't. We just went out last week. Yeah. We didn't get any payments in. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve the release contingent upon the payment of all township fees and invoices, as well as any engineering invoices. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is the County Board of Appeals for Uniform Construction Code. Uh, the fee is $300 to maintain our membership. This is due January 30th, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the payment of $300. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the Dutch Valley Food Distributors Incorporated. And I apologize, sir. I probably should have moved that to the front if, if, if had I known you were here. Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Uh, my name is Dave Easton from Demon Sons. I'm here to represent Dutch Valley Foods. Uh, Dutch Valley Foods, to give you a little bit of background, is located at uh, 7615 uh, Lancaster Avenue up near Mount Edna. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2011, they had the plan approved by this board uh, to expand the warehouse. As you can see here, the plan shows the existing warehouse is shown in the orange. Uh, the uh, Warehouse that was proposed in 2011 is the yellow L-shaped building, as well as uh, some additional buildings on the northern side of the property that were going to be retail and uh, lease space. Uh, since since 2011, they have reassessed their needs and have decided to uh, file a revised plan, which basically uh, redevelops the site. Uh, there again, you see the arm is the existing warehouse. They're going to have a, a bit of a more scaled back and simplified warehouse expansion in two phases. Yellow is the uh, First phase of about 77,000 square feet. Purple would be the second phase of about 55,000 square feet. The northern end would be converted instead of going to retail and lease space would be utilized for truck and trailer parking instead. So we processed the plan. Uh, it's been reviewed by your engineer and by the planning commission. And uh, we're down to just a handful of comments to address. So I'd like to present that to you tonight to ask me to approve the plan. Okay. Um, just from reading over the, the packet that we have here, there are some items that need to be finalized per McCarthy Engineering. Yes. Um, I personally don't have any objections to this because it's already been approved in the past. The only thing that we would need would be those fi five final items uh, satisfied so that uh, it meets all the requirements around like the stormwater management and everything else. Mm -hmm. Can we go over those items? Yeah, Can absolutely. Please. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, item number one, I'm looking at the uh, McCarthy letter in December 27th. December 27th. Yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling through my pack to get to it, but yes. Item number one is zoning, saying that all zoning comments are automatically addressed. There's no outstanding issues there. Right. Item number one on the subdivision was the uh, establishment of the improvements cost, the uh, improvements agreement, which is in the work of the solicitor, yep. the agreement itself. Uh, we did submit a Improvements cost assessment for the total uh, public improvements to a grand total of uh, $1.8 million and change. Has and that been, Dave, has that been reviewed by McCarthy? It was reviewed once and then he made this comment. I sent him another one today, but he was not in the office. Okay, okay so, all right. Yeah. So, but I would uh, ask for one point of clarification or, or maybe uh, I did send it to him today. But the grand total is $1,840,000 and some. But he had requested a, uh, a change to uh, increase the construction observation to 3% of the total. And normally I wouldn't have an objection to that, but in, that, but in this case, that amounts to $48,000. And so it seemed to be a bit excessive for a township engineer uh, doing inspections during construction 
for that amount. So I would just request that you reconsider that amount. Uh, because this, this amount, once it's approved, does get uh, you know, locked up into a letter of credit and, you know, it'll be held there. So, you know, anything we can do to, to minimize that would be helpful. Did you copy the township on there? I did not. So okay. I said, I don't recall seeing Can you that. make sure we get a copy of that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'll make sure we get a copy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I just sent it to him. Uh, item number two under subdivision, we just... Uh, Providing the signs and signatures and seals on the final plan to do on the final plan when it comes for certification from you folks. Item three is the certification ownership. Again, we do that in the final signatures. Item four, a copy of all agreements, uh, approvals, the sanitary sewer service. So the public, it's served by public sewer in Popahawken Township. Mm. The sewer uh, was actually uh, installed, well, when the, the plan was we were you know, constructed back in 2011. We did uh, work out the capacity. There's no capacity issues at all. We have, uh, Dutch Valley has about 70 EDUs reserved and they're only using about 10 and a half right now. So there's plenty of capacity. Couple Hawken is looking at the plan in terms of the, the technical aspects of the sewer to, to decide if they want to have any additional, like maybe a sampling manual or anything installed. So that is still in the works. Okay. We have to get uh, uh, an approval from Couple Hawken County as far as final sewer improvements. But otherwise, we're not building a new connection. We're just uh, you know, just connecting the new part of the warehouse to the existing uh, sewer that's already in place. So it should be pretty straightforward pending their, their final review. <coughs> and then item number five is, is kind of a, an important issue here that I really like to talk about. Uh, evidence of uh, resolution of the conflicting opinions between the developer and Top Hawking Township pertaining to their review of the project. So, <clears throat> on top of the plan here is where the, uh, the township line is. Mm -hmm. North of that would be Topahawken Township. You can see uh, we have a stonework facility that's right at the corner there. It's an existing stonework facility at this point in time. It was built in the 2020, 2011 plan. Mm -hmm. uh, it was requested by the Berks County Planning Commission that we submit this plan to Topahawken Township for review. But, and we did that as a courtesy. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you know, as far as we can tell, none of the project site is located in Top Hawking Township. So our legal counsel is, is uh, firmly of the opinion that Top Hawking Township should have no legal jurisdiction over the, over the project. Now we're not trying to you know, hide anything or, or do anything deceptive, but the fact is their stormwater ordinance is more restrictive than your stormwater ordinance. So this complies with your stormwater ordinance. This complies with the state and that's yet, all we care about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that simplifies the argument, I'm fine with that. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, proceed in that direction. Thank you very much. Uh, the last item is operation maintenance screen, which is in the work. The operation maintenance screen for the stormwater is in the, in the work. That's in the works, too. Yes. That's in the works, too. Yeah, I was just waiting for the approval of that cost estimate. Okay. Gotcha. Great. So we're good to go. Okay. So unless you have any questions or any other concerns or issues, I'd like to, we do have uh, two waiver requests. They're not on the letter, but I should uh, also bring them to your attention. Did, you, did we get anything from the planning commission about the two waivers? Well, the planning commission approved those two waivers. The recommended approval, yes. Yeah, and then you Yeah, I want to say, I want to say we approved it. Yes, you did. At a previous meeting? Yeah. Last month. Okay, I wasn't aware that there was action before. Yeah. So. I have we'll to we'll double check, sure, but it's, I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, as, as we talk about this more, I'm almost positive that we yeah, got those. Well, tell me, I, tell I, me what they were for again. One was for uh, the plant scale and the other was yes. for the uh, fish site. site. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yep. I'm pretty okay. sure you did. Great. Yeah, those those two were done. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't have any problems with this. No, we're thrilled to have you improving your, your property. And okay, great. That's why it's a great organization. We're happy to have you in Marion Township. Yeah, I'm sure they feel like us. <laughs> So I, I think once we have those those remaining things in there, you'll get you'll get the yeah. blessing from the board. So you're asking, uh, you can you, make you a motion. Yeah. He's asking oh, he's for conditional, for conditional final plan approval, condition upon satisfaction of the requirements. Yeah, is December twenty seventh. Is, is there anything right. that we have to do with his request for the reconsideration of the three percent? Is there is there a specific wording that we maybe have to use in that, or just say that it's um, 
uh, conditionally approved based on the satisfaction of the, the outstanding points from the engineer. Yeah, I think that's all you need to do. Okay. And, and reference that particular letter. Okay. Dated December 27. It's an issue that we're not, you don't want to stall and, you know, lose yeah. another month. But yeah. if he's willing to reconsider it and make it 1% or something like that, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. Okay. In that case, I'll make a motion to conditionally approve uh, the request for Dutch Valley Food Distribution Incorporated um, based on their December 27th letter. Uh, contingent upon the satisfaction of the points outstanding with the engineer. Second. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Yep. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Yes. Peter. Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Every year they donate to the fire company. I think the donations are five local companies that are out there. Mm -hmm. There's about 8,000 per fire company. Wow. Really that's that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, they're they're a, a lovely organization. And I, I echo Jim's sentiment about it. We're happy to have them in, in the township. They're a good business. Okay, final item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, has been a Hot point of discussion tonight, the letters around the, the pump out program and the requirements therein uh, were sent out and there will be other letters coming out soon. There may be some revisions subject to further discussion around who gets to inspect or who can inspect, but uh, more to come on that in January. Um, and uh, as we mentioned before, the pump out and the inspection is part of the Act 537, which is a state mandate uh, it's not a situation where we're voluntarily electing to do this this is a requirement that we have to satisfy uh, this keeps us in compliance and helps us avoid a 300 dollars a day fine from the department so we can just find out if yeah like i said i'm if the pumpers are certified and they can do the inspection that's really the only thing that i need. yeah i'm, I'm willing to discuss it further like i said i, I on, on one hand, I absolutely see the point about cost. I do. I absolutely, truly do. But you have a situation where, it, it, and a lot of things, it does make sense to have an impartial third party involved. Because speaking honestly, they're probably not going to jeopardize their certification. But on that same token, it's probably going to be very difficult to catch somebody or call them out on that, that fact. Well, it's, on the well I'm, I'm just saying, uh, we, we, have to, we have to kind of structure this around... Yeah, they're going to have to give us a letter of certification. Yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're absolutely going to have to. They inspected it and they they're gonna, found it to be okay. They're, yeah, they're right. absolutely going to have to. I agree with you, but we want to make sure that we're we're putting in a system that is is fair and uniform and and just for everybody. And unfortunately, sometimes that does mean spending money. But to everybody's point, if it's if it's more than what it should be, I'm I'm not one to to sit on like this is just how we're doing it, how we're doing it. If there's a better way to do it, let's do it. So we'll talk about that more in January and see if we can make some adjustments. We've got $50 the road. Yeah. I mean, it, at that point, we'd have to raise the taxes, uh, which I don't want to do. Um, if, if, you, if, if, you, if, you, if you'd like to donate $50. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly talk about that. I see pros and cons on either side. I think we just need to discuss and decide as a board, and then we can certainly change the ordinance depending. Um, that's the final item on the agenda. Um, the last thing that I will bring up is the police report for, uh, we actually have October and November's, um, really nothing crazy in, in the police reports over the past two months. Um, pretty standard as things go. There were actually no traffic citations in November, which is an oddity. Uh, otherwise October was, was pretty par for the course. They had a couple of traffic warnings, a couple of citations. Uh, a couple of traffic stops. Um, so really nothing outlandish. Um, we did have, um, I think it was, I think it was last month. Somebody called me that there was a, a kid that wandered off. I didn't even get an EMS call mm -hmm. about it, but somebody, uh, a kid wandered out of a house and uh, they were asking around and eventually got the kid back. I don't even know if the police were involved in that one, but yeah. um, they were. Okay. Yeah, because I know it's it was right on Canal Road. That's the only reason I knew about it. Is the the guy came up and was like, "Hey, have you seen my kid?" And I'm like, "What do you what do you, what do you mean? Have I seen your kid?" Um, yeah, it was a two year old that um, opened the door and decided to go for a walk. Um, thankfully, the kid is okay. Uh, they've gotten the kid back back in, and I'm I'm assuming they're probably going to put slightly sturdier locks on their doors. But uh, uh, other than that, and that didn't get specifically called out as an item. But I I knew 
aware awareness of that one because aren't, of proximity. Are you an expert on two year olds? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I live too far away. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, the only thing I would say is a uh, community association. I don't have any notes in front of me. Is there anything that you'd like me to, to do a, a plug for? Or do you want to take a, a moment? Because I know sandwich sales are pretty much done for the year. Um, they were good. Well, they're, your sandwich tickets you have right now are still good for January 12th. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I want to say it's mid, okay. mid to end January. Uh, next year, uh, according to Brown, it's all Sandwich prices will go up. Okay. Um, you're still probably interested in selling some sandwiches. There's still a lot to be done on the, on the playground. We have a lot of um, things in mind. It's our show, May 14th. Um, still interested in having movie night mm -hmm. in the playground. Uh, we still like to have a lot of work done on the baseball diamond. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that we, may, we are a 501c uh, uh, a charitable organization. Charitable organization. Yeah. If you need, if you have too much money, you need a tax write off. I just want to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I look forward to the car show, and I look forward to working mm -hmm. with everybody in the community association to try to to foster a, a sense of community and uh, do fun things like the movie nights. So here's looking forward to 2022. Hopefully, we can make that that all happen. Dan, did I see your hand go? I have a comment. Yes. I'd like to thank you, Jim, I agree, Andy, and his crew and Sue for your year's service. And I think you folks are going in the right direction. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. John. Um, as I stated at, at the last meeting, um, my organization, the Bones of War, the Anomaly District Group, that um, we brought the, the um, Moving Wall to Number of Township. Uh, and I shared with you the success of what we had done with that, along with the community organization with the uh, Jim Kevin Memorial. Jim Kevin was very instrumental in helping me in my, my first two years that I raced, which were last two years already. Well, we had discussed uh, in my organization, and I mentioned it uh, at, your, at your meeting last month, is that in conjunction with when they do the car show, uh, at my workshop over here, we would like to set up um, uh, our educational uh, setup that we do for individuals and for, for communities. My organization has been involved since 2011 in uh, promoting the education of the Vietnam era. Now, what that means is my investment, and it's sitting in this building over here, including General Patton's sons, commanding from Vietnam, I invested a quarter million dollars in this. Now, I didn't do this for any selfish reasons. I did it as a nonprofit, and we also are a 501c foundation. Uh, and I shared with you the success of what we did received from Youngberg, and being that we, we are, you know, I mentioned this even to Mrs. Pepperly that uh, we would like to set up that same weekend uh, over on my property, uh, the small encampment that we set up at these other events uh, to, to en encourage people to understand what that era was about, the changes that it had, had transformed, and so that they are aware of what these veterans had gone through. So in mentioning that, I, I'd like to, to, to be part of that event with them, with them that weekend. And the funny thing is, it's the weekend of my birthday. So what I'd really like to do is I want to have an open house over here in my shop so that you people can see that what i got going on here is not anything detrimental to the community. It's to help the community. And the big important part is I can't have a quarter million dollars worth of Vietnam era equipment in an area like Reading, Pennsylvania, right bottom of Mount Mulberry Street, where I'm going to have gangbangers breaking and stealing this stuff. That's why I chose Marion Township, Jim. You know, I want to be in, in, in a community that this stuff is is safe, and number one, Jim Kevin was my hero guy. I mean, he helped me more than anybody else did, other than Dick Tobias, which, you know, which is what brought me to this community. Um, I don't know whether Mary mentioned you or not, one of the fellows that's involved in my race organization um, has in his yard in Indiana, a Tobias frame with a pinnal body that we, we talked about re re replicating uh, Jim Kevin's car. You know, and, and time is ticking. I need to be spending my time doing that not having people cutting the cord of my generator like they did at the last meeting, or, or throwing stones that are necessarily being thrown. You know, I'm trying to work with you people to make this a better place for everybody. And at the same time, my dream is for that for that building over there to be first county's only Vietnam Museum. My question when I'm done. Is that too much to ask, Jim? I'm 60 years of age, guys. I'm retiring. I invested my money in a Vietnam Museum quality exhibit 
that is only, only challenged by Patriot Point in South Carolina. I turned down money and state grants to move that to South Carolina to choose Marion Township. All I ask is to be part of this. And, and you have you can you can certainly do that. Like I said, that's not the that's not the issue. I and kids' rights and, and General Patton's sons can you. The you know, thing I had to take the fifty caliber off the damn thing. You know why? Because I wanted my keys and shoot the thing. You know, and it is not firing by the way. Um, as I shared with you at the last one, and I have it with me. We also have a gun truck uh, called Satan's Little Angel. We participate in the Carlisle um, Heritage Day event. I've just received emails that thank God with the skin and damage shit over with that we can start doing these events again. We were doing 38 events per year up and down the East Coast of the United States. When I settled in with New York Township and we bought that wall there, the supervisors told us at that first meeting, no, we're not going to prove any money for that. I said, what if we create a committee and we get the funding to do that? We had that funding less than three weeks. Now, I'm not asking you to bring 55,000 people here like we did in New York Township in the course of a week. But that's something you might want to think about going down the road. What I'm asking you to do is very simple. The weekend they do the car show, have something else tied in with that so that people do choose to come to see that. If they want to learn about that era, they have a choice to learn about that era. Well, I'll, I'll actually defer to the community associations. They're largely their event. If they'd like to work with you on, on setting that up as an ancillary thing, I don't see why, why not. But the only thing I, that, that I would ask that we hold back I fire up that nitro funny car. I'll set a car on to the rob zone. Now, I don't want to go start with that car for that event. You know, but to have a 330 mile an hour car in the community, as well as, and Jim, you're a sconifist. Go on to YouTube, type in BCTV, and look at the 19 episodes that I've done with Pennsylvania Pickers. Number 20 is coming up, and that's a milestone. And one for, for uh, November. You really might want to take a look at that. I did a little parody on that as to uh, a comparison. Uh, as to what Thanksgiving was all about, maybe in reference to Marion Township, maybe in reference to other townships. Maybe you're not aware that my family has been here since 1666. When one of the ancestors that spent five years coming down here from New York married a lengthy Indian woman. That's what started my beginning in this township. Would I like to live here? <laughs> I'm scared to at this point. Did I want to? Yeah. But what I don't want to see is I don't want to see major subdivisions coming in and forcing these dairy farmers to sell their land because they've been over and closed from the trees. I think we just well, took about three left turns. Yeah, so say, exactly. so, let's, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll wrap this up, but just, just for your peace of mind, I'll leave you with one thing. When we redid zoning, and that's one of the things that thankfully I had a high degree of control on with being on the board. There wasn't a lot of opposition on things. We made sure the zoning is set up that it's very heavily ag preserved. So our focus or, is is on retaining what makes Marion Township Marion Township. Exactly. And to your other points, you can absolutely do a lot of things with a property. There are certain things that you can, certain things that you can't. Our our really big mandate here is making sure everybody's safe. So if it's a, if it's things, if exactly and so if there's somebody whether it's you or anybody else who's engaging in unsafe behavior we need to make sure that we take the the correct actions to make sure that it is safe for all the other yeah. residents. You gotta be a good neighbor. Yep, exactly. And sometimes you gotta make sure somebody's being a good neighbor. But yeah. one thing um, I guarantee you, gentlemen, and Julie, give me a chance to finish this. Uh, I've been involved with Red Dragon Karate for 45 years. I'm a Sunday to world master. Now what that means to Sunday is. I have to uphold a tradition. And what that tradition means is that I am to help people and not to hurt people. And what that also means is that little part of the world over there, you don't ever have to worry about any crime happening because that is one thing that we do not tolerate. That would be brought to the attention of the police and we work hand in hand with men in blue. Okay. Thank you. Jim, do you have any comments? Andy. Nope. Sue. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, I'm, Happy New Year. Okay, in that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.43 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Happy New Year, everyone.